My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is how I edit bad photos. Let's go. I don't do a whole lot of photo editing on this channel, but I love traveling and take a bunch of photos. AI has been all over the place, and people are experimenting with the beta version of Photoshop and the generative fill feature. That reminded me of this photo I took while I was in Ireland. Yeah, nothing special. I literally took it and went, eh, and moved on. We were out in the island of Anishmore, just a short boat ride over, and all we got was a beautiful sun-filled day that locals were raving about. I mean, I can't really complain about it, but for the purpose of this video and trying to get a moody shot, it was horrible. Side note, parts of the Banshees of Anishiran was shot on this island. I did get some great shots on my trip. The weather changed while we explored Ireland, but this one photo needed a helping hand without the aid of AI. So let me walk you through some simple steps to take a not so great photo and turn it into something more appealing. The first thing we need to do is jump into Lightroom. For now, just ignore the sky. We're going to replace that. We just need to make this moodier. That starts with dropping the exposure a bit and adding some contrast. With those two little adjustments, it's already looking better. That's usually my first step to any photo, and if you don't like it, you can always change it. You can mess with whatever settings you want until you're happy. Next up is usually adding some clarity. I start with 20, but I'm going to bump it up a bit for this photo, and you can see if I move the slider, how much of a difference it makes. I'm also going to bring the vibrance up so I can see what I'm working with. I'll leave the saturation alone because for this photo or vibe I'm going for, I'll probably be taking color out instead of adding it. Now, since I'll be replacing the sky with a more overcast environment, I'll need to drop the highlights and I'm going to build up my contrast. I don't like to crank the contrast all the way up and you'll see what I'm talking about. If I just slide the contrast to 100, it looks like a mess. I usually live in the 20 to 50 range for my style of editing. Let me drop my highlights boost my whites to about 50. I can always dial it back and then bring my blacks down. Let's do a quick before and after and you can see how a few simple tweaks can really change the mood of a picture. We're definitely heading in the right direction. The next step is to tweak the colors. If we want that overcast, gloomy Ireland day, we have to alter the color. In the HSL tab, I wanna start with hue. There's quite a bit of yellow in this picture, so we're going to slightly lean that to the green. And for the green, let's slide that towards the yellow. It's a very small adjustment that I think evens everything out. For saturation, we're going to make some big moves. If you look at the stones, they're a bit warm. If I move the orange slider, you can see it better. That's not what I want, so we're going to take all of that out from the picture. A quick before and after, much better. I know we still have some yellow in there and the green pops too much, so we'll take both of those down to about, let's go negative 35. Check the before and after. This is definitely changing the look from mid sunny day to an overcast, almost stormy late in the day vibe. It would have been nice to capture the moment in camera, but this will have to do until I can go back. The next step is to really alter our image with masking, and I like to start with a linear gradient. Let's go to masking and click on linear gradient. We'll start at the bottom and go to above the doorway. I wanna drop the exposure so it kind of leads us to this entryway. We can always drop the shadows a bit as well. And we need to pull out some of this color like we did for the wall. Now we're talking. I'm just going to scroll down to effects and completely drop the clarity down to negative 100 and even bring down the texture. This really softens the grass that's closest to the camera. Let me show you the difference. Look what one simple linear gradient can do to your picture. Because the center of the picture is really the focal point, I wanna add some touches to the stone wall to make it stand out a bit more. We're going to select brush and let's do some contrast, texture, and good old clarity to spice it up. We can make the brush a bit wider and cover the wall. This is also a small detail, but you can increase or decrease the effect based on what you like. Adding to our contrast that I like to build in stages, let's work with shadows and highlights. I'm going to grab the brush tool and set the shadows to negative 10. Now looking at this photo, we can see where the shadows or darkest parts of the image are. I'm just going to build on that and work my way around. Another subtle detail that makes a difference. On the flip side, I'll do the same with the highlights. I already have my brush ready to go, highlights at 10, and I bump the exposure to 0.1. I'm going to hit these stones and maybe just some of the grass that's in front of the opening. It doesn't take much and we made slight targeted changes instead of being heavy handed. I really didn't go crazy with this photo. I also bumped up the grain. This is the world I live in when I edit photos. 
most of the time. People may have different opinions or workflows. Do what works for you. Let's see where we're at with the before and after with this picture. This is where we started from and look at it now. From a picture I thought was never going to work has now become something interesting except for the sky which is what we're going to work on next. To do a sky replacement let's hop over to Photoshop. Once again, here's our image and let's get to work replacing this sky. That really is out of place now. Let's go to edit and down to sky replacement. I just wanted to mention I always take pictures of the sky. I haven't done a lot of sky replacements, but I do have a folder full of storms, sunsets, cloudy afternoons, whatever looks interesting. Take a pic and save it for later. It's nice to be editing and have some options on hand. I know AI might make all this obsolete, but for now, it's a good habit. Now, I've already selected my sky. I've bumped up the scale to 150 and turned the fade edge to zero. You just have to play around and see what works for your image. I wanted some of the brightness to poke out, and all I have to do is bring the brightness down to about negative 40. I think this is where I wanna be, so I'm going to hit okay. You could stop right here depending on the image you used for your sky. I'm going to make one more adjustment. Head over to create a new adjustment layer and select curves. Just to give the sky a little more pop, I want to do a slight S curve. We're going to bring down the shadows and increase the highlights just enough to match the scene. Right about there. When you're done, you can save and quit Photoshop. The image will show up in Lightroom as a new image. Here's the image from Photoshop and here's the original before the sky replacement. Not bad and really didn't take a lot of time to match these up. If you wanted, you could still make adjustments to the sky using the brush tool in Lightroom. I always tinker a bit. You can see or I hope you can see how much small adjustments can change your image for the better and that's how I like to work. Let's have a look at the shot we started with. From here, using Lightroom and Photoshop, we now have this. We were going for a specific mood and I think we nailed it. Like I mentioned earlier, it's always nice to get what you want in camera. I didn't have much choice in the matter for this photo, but it's a great exercise in photo editing and I really like how it turned out. Most people would have no idea how much I really altered the original image. I have two thoughts on the matter. When I shoot something, bring it into Lightroom, sometimes it's epic. I barely have to make changes. That feels good as a photographer. Other times, like this example, not the best photo, but feels good as an editor. I guess I just roll with the punches. Try to get great photos when I can, edit the crap out of others when I can't. All of it makes me better and I really can't complain about that. Funny how a shot I completely ignored turned into a YouTube video. You just never know. Well, there you have it, how I edit bad photos. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more on the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. Leave a comment if you have questions. Until next time, it's a wrap.